Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about element number 21, scandium. Scandium is the first element you've never heard of. The total world trade in scandium metal is maybe 20 pounds a year, so it is safe to say that very few people have ever seen any in person. The production of scandium oxide is a couple of tons per year, still a tiny amount by world standards. Scandium is an example of an element that is expensive not because it is particularly rare in Earth's crust, but because there's no place where it is concentrated. For most other elements, even those much rare overall, there is some ore somewhere in which it can be found at much higher concentration. But scandium is spread thinly all over, which makes it expensive to gather and purify. Scandium is used to make strong metals and bright lights. A tiny amount mixed with aluminum creates some of the strongest aluminum alloys known, which are used in fighter jets, baseball bats, and bicycle frames, all of the expensive variety. Scandium iodide in high intensity metal halide discharge lighting transforms the would otherwise be harsh light into a more pleasant sun-like spectrum. Metal halide lighting is used when very large amounts of light are needed, on streets and in warehouses and megastores. It is more efficient than any other common light source except sodium vapor, whose yellow color has a tendency to make people look like zombies and is thus too unpleasant for anything but highway lighting. While LED lighting may come one day to dominate our homes, the sheer volume of light you can get from metal halide bulbs will continue to ensure its place in the public eye, literally. Scanium light is something millions see without ever hearing the name. Titanium, on the other hand, is a name millions hear even when there is no actual titanium in sight. As you will learn in the titanium video, if you're interested in learning more about the element titanium, the link is in the description below. A fusion of scandium and aluminum are used for baseball bats, fighter jets, and bicycle frames. Scandium is used for lighting. Scandium iodide is added to mercury vapor lamps to produce light similar to sunlight for film and TV. Scandium is also used for strong alloys. Scandium and aluminum combined make a light but strong alloy used for sport equipment and fighter jets. It's also used for pipe leaks. Scandium-46 is a radioactive isotope which can be used to detect leaks in underground pipes. Here we have a molecule of scandium oxide, consisting of two atoms of scandium and three atoms of oxygen. Here we have scandium triiodide, consisting of one atom of scandium and three atoms of iodine. Scandium-3 oxide, or scandia, is an inorganic compound with formula SC2O3. It is one of several oxides of rare earth elements with a high melting point. It is used in the preparation of other scandium compounds as well as in high temperature systems, electronic ceramics, and glass composition, according to Wikipedia. And its formula is SC2O3. Scandium is mainly used for research purposes. It has, however, great potential because it has almost as low a density as aluminum and a much higher melting point. An aluminum scandium alloy has been used in Russian MIG fighter planes, high-end bicycle frames, and baseball bats. Scandium iodide is added to mercury vapor lamps to produce a highly efficient light source resembling sunlight. These lamps help television cameras to reproduce color well when filming indoors or at nighttime. The radioactive isotope scandium-46 is used as a tracer in oil refining to monitor the movement of various fractions. It can also be used in underground pipes to detect leaks. Here we have an image of element number 21, scandium, the transition element. Its symbol is SC, its atomic number is 21, its atomic weight is 44.956, its color is silvery white, its standard state is solid at 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Its classification is metallic. I'm the very first transition element, but don't make a fuss over me, I'm a bit shy. I spend so much time hanging out with the lanthanoids that I'm often included with them in a group called the quote unquote rare earth elements. My name comes from the Latin word for Scandinavia or Scandia. I give strength to posh aluminum bike frames and baseball bats, as previously mentioned. Scandium's date of discovery was in 1879. Its density is 2.985 grams per centimeters cubed. Its melting point is 1,541 degrees Celsius or 2,806 degrees Fahrenheit. Its boiling point is 2,830 degrees Celsius or 5,126 degrees Fahrenheit. There are very few ores that contain significant amounts of scandium, so it is not widely used. It is also expensive. One pound or 0.5 kilograms of scandium costs more than $120,000. Here's a laboratory sample of pure scandium, element number 21. Scandium SC again is a chemical element, it's a rare earth metal of group 3 of the periodic table. Scandium is a silvery white, moderately soft metal. It is fairly stable in air but will slowly change its color from silvery white to a yellowish appearance because of formation of 
SCO3. Seen here in the formula when it combines with oxygen, here is the unbalanced and balanced formula, although unlabeled. The metal slowly dissolves in dilute acids except hydrofluoric acid, HF, in which a protective trifluoride layer prevents further reaction. Scanium is paramagnetic from 0 Kelvin, negative 273 degrees Celsius, or negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit, to its melting point, 1,541 degrees Celsius, or 2,806 degrees Fahrenheit. It becomes superconducting at negative 200 and 73.1 degrees Celsius or negative 459.6 degrees Fahrenheit at pressures exceeding 186 kilobars. After Russian chemist Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev in 1871 predicted this element's existence, tentatively calling it ekaboron, Swedish chemist Lars Friedrich Nielsen in 1879 discovered its oxide, scandia, in the rare earth minerals gadolinite and euxinite. And Swedish chemist Per Theodor Cleve in 1879 identified scandium as the hypothetical ekaboron. Scandium is found in small proportions, generally less than 0.2% in many of the heavy lanthanide ores and in many tin, uranium and tungsten ores. Thorvitite, a scandium silicate, is the only mineral containing large amounts of scandium, about 34%. But unfortunately, this mineral is quite rare and is not an important source of scandium. The cosmic abundance of scandium is relatively high, although it is about the 50th most abundant element on Earth. Its abundance is similar to that of beryllium. It is about the 23rd most abundant element in the sun. In 1869, Mendeleev noticed that there was a gap in atomic weights between calcium-40 and titanium-48 and predicted there was an undiscovered element of intermediate atomic weight. I predict the element will be X2O3, whatever the element is. Scandiary. Here we have a formula of SC plus O combining to form SCO3. Here's the unbalanced and balanced formula. It was discovered as scandium in 1879 by Lars Friedrich Nielsen in the University of Uppsala, Sweden. He extracted it from euxinite, a complex mineral containing eight metal oxides. He had already extracted erbium oxide from euxinite and then another oxide of a lighter element whose atomic spectrum showed it to be an unknown metal. This was the metal that Mendeleev had predicted and its oxide was Se2O3. Two atoms of scandium combined to three atoms of oxygen. Here we have some information on scandium oxide, as previously mentioned, and here again is the molecule of scandium oxide, consisting of two atoms of scandium to three atoms of oxygen. Here's some more images of scandium oxide. Scandium metal itself was only produced in 1937 by the electrolysis of molten scandium chloride. Scandium-3 chloride is the inorganic compound with the formula SCCl3. It is a white, high-melting ionic compound which is deliquescent and highly water-soluble. This salt is mainly of interest in the research laboratory. Both the anhydrous form and the hexahydrate are commonly available, according to Wikipedia. Its formula is SCCl3. Again, scandium was discovered in 1879 by Lars Friedrich Nielsen. The name derives from, quote-unquote, scandia, or the Latin name for Scandinavia. Its classification, again, is a metal. In nature, scandium exists in the form of one stable isotope. Among 25, excluding nuclear isomers, radioactive isotopes with masses ranging from 36 to 61, the most stable is scandium-46, with a half-life of 83.79 days. And the least stable is scandium-39, which has a half-life of less than 300 nanoseconds. Scandium is separated from the other rare earths by precipitation by the insoluble potassium scandium sulfate or by extraction of scandium thiocyanate by di ethyl ether. The metal itself was first prepared in 1938 by the electrolysis of potassium lithium and scandium chlorides in a euthetic mixture, i.e. a mixture having the lowest melting point possible with those components. Scandium is now produced mostly as a byproduct of uranium extraction from the mineral davidite, which contains about 0.02% scandium oxide. Scandium exists in two allotropic structural forms. The alpha phase in close packed hexagonal, the beta phase is body centered cubic. Scandium is widely distributed and occurs in minute quantities in over 800 mineral species. It is the main component of the very rare and collectible mineral thorvitite, again, consisting of scandium yttrium, silicon, and oxygen. If you're interested in learning about the elements silicon and oxygen, the link is in the description below. We will talk about yttrium in a future video, so stay tuned. Thorvitite is found in Scandinavia. Scandinavia is a subregion in Northern Europe with strong historical, cultural, and linguistic ties between its constituent peoples. In English usage, Scandinavia most commonly refers to Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. According to Wikipedia, its area is 358,325 miles squared. 
Scandium can be recovered from thorvitite or extracted as a byproduct from uranium mill tailings, sandy waste material. Metallic scandium can be prepared by reducing the fluoride with calcium metal, seen here in the formula. Scandium fluoride with calcium creates scandium and calcium fluoride. It can also be prepared by electrolyzing molten potassium, lithium, and scandium chlorides using electrodes of tungsten wire and molten zinc. Only a few uses of this unusual transition metal have been developed, mostly due to scandium's limited availability and high cost. Its low density and high melting point suggest applications as an alloying agent for lightweight materials and military and high performance applications. The major uses of scandium are as an alloy additive to aluminum-based alloys for sporting goods and in high-intensity metal halide lamps. As previously mentioned, when alloyed with aluminum and aluminum-based alloys, scandium limits high temperature grain growth. Here we have some information on scandium oxide and davidite. Davidite is a rare earth oxide mineral with the chemical end members LA and CE. It exists in two forms, davidite 20 O36. Discovered at Radium Hill Mine, South Australia in 1906 and named for Australian geologist Tanat William Edgeworth David. According to Wikipedia, the chemistry of scandium bears a closer resemblance to that of other rare earth elements of oxidation state plus 3 than to that of aluminum or titanium. Some of its behavior, however, is atypical of the rare earths because of its significantly smaller ionic radius, as compared with the rare earth average. For this reason, the SC3 plus ion is a relatively strong acid and has a much greater tendency to form complex ions. So that was scandium explained in as a short amount of time as possible, in X minutes or less. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, thank you everyone for watching. Have a great one.